All right, and so the next master trainer that we're going to have uh, joining us today, his name is John Johnson. He's with Investment House. And master trainer John Johnson with Investment House. Uh, John Johnson is an honors graduate of the University of Texas School of Business and School of Law. Now, while working in the oil patch and then practicing law, he began investing as the most novice investors, relying on brokers, tips, and relatives to make his fortune. Now, frustrated with poor results, John determined to find a method that worked. Reading all that he could find on the economy and investing, John set out to devise a plan that would take advantage of the major trends in the market and the economy and that could be applied again and again without the need of complicated and varying strategies. His methodology was so successful that his brokers followed his trades and urged them to teach their clients how to invest using his techniques. Now, the response was so impressive that in 1998, John founded StockSplits.net, the premier stock splits resource, along with other services provided at InvestmentHouse.com. Today, John writes about and teaches economic trends, understanding market direction, and specific stock investment strategies to thousands of investors so they too can reach John's goal, the ability to do what you want, when you want. He has made numerous television appearances, including CNBC and Bloomberg Television. He's quoted in Smart Money, Kiplinger, the Technology Investor, the Chicago Sun-Times, and other business magazines and newspapers. Now, despite the busy schedule, John always takes time to enjoy the fruits of his investment techniques with his wife, his two sons, and daughter on their South Texas estate, and I'm excited to introduce John Johnson. Well, thank you. That sounds relatively impressive. You know, the thing I've heard today on all of these uh, seminars, and they've been great, is that um, we need to do what the market is showing us. That's what our focus has to be on. And a lot of these techniques are designed just to get you to look at what the market is telling you, not what everyone else is telling you, not the noise. And that's the key. And I'll tell you, when I was looking at uh, putting together this seminar, I was test checking out the recent activity in the market, because that's always the most germane to everyone. They want to know what's going on now. And when we look at what was happening oh gosh, over the last few months, we had a nice long steady trend and then things got choppy. People started to lose money and that's what always happens when you have a little turn or a hiccup in an existing trend. And it's very important to be able to recognize when that's happening in order to protect what you've made on this entire move higher. But also, so when things do stabilize, you can either move back to the upside, or if it stabilizes and breaks and it goes down into a, into a downtrend again, you can play that. And that's what this was all about, because it struck me, and some of you may remember this day, May 15th was a very interesting day in the market. John? Yes. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, I'm not sure uh, if you have dual monitors, but we're, we don't see a slideshow. We see your email right now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, let me move it over. Sorry about that. Yeah. No problem. Sorry to cut you off there. There we go. How's that? Does that make more sense? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. You know, my emails are not that interesting either. So there you go. <laughs> all right. Always beauty in the eye of the holder. But anyway, all right. Well, let me just show you this chart again very quickly so we can. But you, nice steady trend upside, and then boom, we started having volatility. And that's what you hear every day on the TV. Oh, volatility, we're having volatility issues. We sure do. But the problem is, the one they talk about on TV all the time is the VIX. And while well, it can be very useful a couple of times in, you know, a year maybe, most of the time it means nothing. We've seen volatility down to zero, or not zero, but very low numbers, not going anywhere, but the market keeps going higher. So what good is that to many people? Well, what really is important to you and me, and over time, you've got to learn to look at, uh, and what gets the people very excited on the financial stations is the day-to-day -day volatility. They don't talk about it that way because they always refer to VIX. But the day-to-day -day and intraday volatility is what can do a lot of damage to you as a trader or an investor. Whatever you do, swing trading, whatever, you need to be aware that well, when volatility starts to ratchet up, you either need to change your strategy, back off, and most importantly, tune out what they're saying 
on the big television. And a lot of the people that I teach, what we have to focus on is getting out of the mindset of listening to the financial stations. Yeah, you keep them on in case there's breaking news. But what we do, a lot of times we sit there and just turn them off and mute them. And we watch what the market is telling us because you will get beat up with these big swings back and forth. And you can get out of the market, and that's fine. You've protected yourself. But a lot of times we don't get back in when we see, or if we're looking, should see what's happening in the actual stocks. And that's why May 15th was such an important day and really drove home the point of what's been going on. Well, what was happening in the market, what happens again and again in the market? And that is people get, as a lot of the speakers today said, greed and fear. They play a big role. The emotions get ratcheted up. And when you start losing money, you start making poor decisions. And you get hit in your brokerage account. And that snowballs. And you end up making bad decisions, often at a time when if you just focused, you'd be making money. One of the biggest obstacles is recognizing those market turns. As I said, that's when you will get hit. I like to compare it to a change of seasons. And that's when you have a nice orderly move higher, and then you have some volatility set in. I mean, we all see, um, think about when summer's here. Down here on the Texas, South Texas, the forecast is the same every day. You have 100 degrees, 20% chance of rain. But then when the fall comes in, things start to change. You get cold fronts coming in, and that steady day in and day out forecast starts to change. You start to get up and down moves day to day, and intraday, and over the weeks. And that can that's when you start getting beat up. And you, the lot that you gained in the move higher, well, it's suddenly something that you see it evaporating, and some panic may set in. Well, it's just a matter of getting through that, recognizing it, and acting accordingly. And this seems like such a simple concept. But a lot of times, we get too mired down in the minutia, and we don't, and we're, we're waiting for our indicators to work, waiting for our plan to work, and it stops working the way it has been, and being creatures of habit, instead of stepping back and saying, this isn't working, should I just stop? Should I change my strategy? We keep going ahead and we keep moving forward. And the next thing you know, our brokerage account is getting hit. When times are good, you know, everybody's happy on CNBC and Bloomberg, et cetera. All the bulls come out and they tell you how things are great. But then things get bad, they tell you, after the market's gone down 5 or 10%, they cut out the bears, and they tell you how bad things are and how bad they're going to get. So it doesn't do you a lot of good, and it's a very tough environment that's mentally wearing on you, and it makes you take your eye off the ball. It brings out the worst attributes that, we do, that all of us have, and we start to lose confidence in our system. Now, you should have a trading plan that you're working with, and you should stick to that trading plan regardless. It should be designed to help you recognize when to pull back or when to re step back, reanalyze, and then move forward. If not, you're going to get that snowball effect. The losses lead to bad decisions. They lead to more losses. And the next thing you know, you can't see changes taking place. You give back a lot of gains. And then the most important part is, even if you manage to get through it, and you take some hits, you're gun shot. You don't get back in, and you don't pay attention to what's there. And you have, if you're listening and reading, there's so many. There's many pundits pushing their book as there are investors putting their money to work. And if you listen to them, you will start to mix and match your strategies. Don't do it. Stay with what you have. You look for a good, high probability setup, and that's what everyone's been talking about today. Whatever your plan is, high probability setup. You've got to go with those, and when they show up, you have to act. But when you listen, when you don't recognize the volatility is the problem, and you listen to other people talking their book, they're going to take your eye off the ball. So, obviously, there are positives to 
day-to-day -day and intraday volatility. The key, well, is getting back in. You have to recognize what's happening and then it, you can even use what they're saying on the television station if you can't stay away and have to listen and you can use that against them. And that's exactly what we were doing when we recognized what was going on when that, well, I'll show the chart again. Let's go right back to it. When the volatility set in, we were getting the day-to-day -day and intraday moves. We were getting the large swings back and forth, one day up, one day down, and you were getting these moves that were large, per good percentage moves. And then the um, <clears throat> TV, the uh, TV heads, and I have to admit, I am one of them sometimes. I try when I get on to be you know, a little bit, uh, maybe more less melodramatic about it, and just try to tell you what to look at and what stocks are actually forming up. And that is the key, obviously. VIX volatility, the day-to-day, -day the official volatility reading, it really isn't going to help you much. They're going to talk about it a lot, but we know that VIX has been low for a long time. It's not a great forecasting tool most times. Now, things are very in a sell-off and it spikes high. Yes, at an extreme, it can tell you that you might be bottoming. And there are times you have what we call the thermonuclear fix, and that's when volatility measured by the fix is rising as stocks rise. And that's a major sign of a sell-off. It happened most recently, back before the big collapse in um, 2006. You had the market moving higher. You had volatility moving higher at the same time and then the major meltdown in the market that followed. So when you see that, yeah, it's an important measure. Get the heck out of Dodge or start to get ready to play the turn to the downside. But as you can see from the current level of volatility, the market's been rising higher. Volatility has been diving. We're talking about a single digit VIX um, either today or at any point. It could happen at any time. But that doesn't really tell you much. Now does it? The market's been rising. Volatility's been heading lower or staying constant. Yes, it can get too low. Yes, it's a measure of complacency, but just as a market can be oversold forever, it can also be overbought forever, and then finally turn. This doesn't really help you much. What we're talking about are the unofficial ones, the day-to-day -day and the intraday. As you can see, but VIX really went nowhere while the market was starting to sell. It was actually moving down. It wasn't trending, so it doesn't tell you a whole lot. Intraday volatility, that's the move up and down that we've been talking about. Uh, the ones I said you have the day-to-day -day and intraday. Obviously here, big swings up and down. This is on May 20th. And this is the intraday move, down, up, down. You can get chewed up by this. This beats you up. Obviously, we have the high to low. This is, I think, May 8th around there. These are the kind of days that day trading, we really like these because we get two big moves and we can play them, but it's really tough if you're in positions on the way up or you took them late in the trend and you get and you start seeing this all evaporate on you. So you have to recognize what's going on. As I said, you make bad decisions. I've already talked about that quite a bit. The problem is how do you eliminate it? Well, as you can see, if you panic, obviously you're not going to help your situation. The key is don't get frustrated, don't get exasperated, don't listen to the TV pundits. You have to keep your emotions out of the equation as much as possible. Again, at this stage of the game, I mean, most of you out there will have a, a trading plan and you need to have the plan in hand or on the side of your desk knowing what you want to do and reinforce that every time you go into a play. Keep your emotions out. It's difficult and this is one of the problems that confronts everyone, even you know, the people here in the office. When you get a group of people together, even in like, trading rooms, but you have online chats, the emotion can grip that room, good and bad, and cause decisions, or maybe take you along in directions that you wouldn't go for your plan, per your plan. So it's important to have your plan out, know what you want to play before the market, 
and execute it. Now, it may not turn out the way you intended. It's nothing more frustrating than to have a great plan laid out for the day and then everything gap away from you one way or the other. You can scramble and adjust, but you have to stay with what you know. Now, if you don't, you can, as I said, make that bad decision. But if you're watching, if you recognize what's going on with the volatility, and if you're watching what the market tells you, then you'll come out, and that sounds trite, but you'll come out ahead. When there's blood in the streets, as the saying goes, those who keep their heads react to what is happening versus what the hype is, will come out ahead. Now, remember you recall, nothing is Mr. Tepper, he's got a lot more money than I did, but on May 15th, he was saying that he was nervous, that the Fed should be moving faster, and he was getting a bit nervous. Now, he probably had everything under control. Heck, he might have threw this out there for a reason. But the market, being kind of reactive as it is, you know, it kind of... It went down sharply that day, but it reversed the two and a half month pullback on that very day. There was volatility had created nervousness, not to mention a five year run in the market. And the Fed still controlling bonds, interest rates. They have very, very controlled markets right now, but that had people worried about a pullback. When's the Fed going to step back? And the market was nervous about that. And it even got some people, whether contrived or truly nervous. And but what happens typically when you see someone of note or repute come out and say, this is it or this is what I believe, often that signals a major turn. Whether it's newspapers, magazines, you've all heard the story about the big indicators of Contra indicators of sentiment. Well, this was a classic one. At this time, we were looking not at what everyone was saying. We were not panicking about the market going down because we'd been watching all along. And we were watching key stocks make good, sound bases. We weren't listening to the TV. Oh, yeah, we were listening to it. We had it on in order to hear if there was any breaking news. You can do that just so you can know what's happening. But the market's going to show you through its actions, what's going on. But at that point, we saw Google setting up a little inverted head and shoulders after the sell-off. We said it was on 5.18, we said it was 5.16, we said it was time to get ready to buy, and then we issued the buy on 5.18. Now, all of this looked ugly. It looked as if Google had something of a head and shoulders it was trying to set up. Maybe it turns out and does that anyway. But at the time, that wasn't the play. The play was from tuning out, I'm nervous, watch what you're doing, and looking at the stocks as they developed. You need to know your patterns. We teach patterns a lot. You need to know your support. You need to know your Fibonacci's. You need to know your trend lines. You've got to find the areas where investors battle it out, where the sellers and buyers fight over something. And right here, they were doing it with Google. Big reach lower, a rebound, a reach back to the same point. You can see the intraday bounces off of those lows. Then you had the rally, the test, and then the move higher. And that was the time to buy. And we did. And now it's setting up again in something of a little pennant pattern after that initial move. And we'll see if we can get some more out of this play. The point, the key, was that we weren't listening to what people were saying in the sense that, oh yeah, we're going to listen to this. This is pretty good idea, pretty good advice, because what they're saying is their book, or it doesn't even fit our trading plan. If you try to stick someone else's thoughts and ideas into your trading plan, you're destined to have a bad effect. Maybe it'll work. Usually it looks like some mutant out of some movie. Now, on the same thing on TripAdvisor. On 518, this is right at the time Mr. Tepper was nervous. And a lot of people were. I'm not picking on him, but he just voiced it, and he's a big maven. Well, the market trip was ready. It had its own little inverted head and shoulder at the bottom of pull-off. We've seen this trade ever since the market bottom. The rally, and then the inverted head and shoulders at the bottom, leads to another rally, and now forming maybe a cup with a candle, 
and moving higher again. So we issued the triple alert on 518, and it's been a nice play for us. You got to recognize how volatility is influencing your decisions and how you continue your trading and investing plan, even in those times. Are you going to adjust your plan, or is that, or do you see the trends? Do you see patterns set up, or do you, is it just nothing? You have to go with what you're confident in in times of volatility. You have to see it. Don't force it. If it's there, you will see it if it fits your plan, and you'll make the trade. Now, the sell-off from March to May, that was hardly blood in the streets. It was like a minor abrasion, but it certainly felt like the market was getting clobbered. And that's what happens when you have a market that's rallied right for five or six years on the main line of quantitative easing. You're going to get that kind. That's what's probably bothering the Fed right now when it's worried about complacency. Because if someone breaks land somewhere, the market gets a little bit concerned. But then again, as long as the market knows the Fed's there, it comes right back up. So there's nothing to worry about. Even now, with the Fed tapering, the market's got its, uh, the Fed's got the market's back, and it knows it. So it's still moving higher for now, for now. But that's okay. We can't forecast the future. You don't know what's going to happen six months down the road, but we do know what's happening right now. We did see Google moving. We did see trips setting up, and that is what mattered. Turned into another trading opportunity, an excellent one. And the market move is still ongoing. But it was only if you were looking where you should. And that was whatever opportunity the market is presenting, whatever kind of pattern, triangle off the bottom, inverted head and shoulders. If you were looking, you saw it, and you were ready to move. Sorry about that. It appears like a simple issue. And I mean, I tell you, I think it's a simple issue until I get questions from all of our um, subscribers who, it seems like, as greed and fear never change, the emotions in the market never change, we tend to make the same mistakes over and over again. If you can correct those mistakes, you're on your way. That's really the power of this, of correcting the repeating mistake, because what's going to repeat over and over again? It's going to be the rallies. It's going to be the volatility that sets in after a rally. And then you're either going to break back to the upside or you're going to break down and continue lower. That's the repetition, and we just have to recognize it. So yes, it does seem simple, but we always, always, I even have to catch myself and the people here with me, listen to the market, not what they're telling you on the TV. Now, I go into again about the same, about listening to these folks who are talking in the book, and I want to reiterate this point. I see this mistake many times. People try to trade or incorporate into their plan what little piece of information they grab off of one of the financial stations or one of the websites somewhere. That is a bad mix. It's usually volatile in itself. It will create bad results because you have to trust your plan enough to put it into play. If you pull something from somewhere else, you're mixing and matching. You're trying to move maybe a, a six-month time frame piece of trading advice with a three-week plan that you have in place for a particular trend. So recognize you need to tune out the noise and trade your plan. That is going to be the key. And I know the plan you have involves looking at the market, not looking at TV. So the thing is, stick with your plan. I'm going to browbeat that. I know it sounds, sounds like repetition, because it is. But what do we do? I mean, it's easy to say, okay, stick to your plan. What can we do in order to stay with it? Well, you got to build back in the wings. You've got to get your confidence up a lot of times because when the market's jumping, you get beat up. Heck, you know, I trade pretty emotions. i got rules. If it's here, I'm gone. If it keeps going, I'm in. Some, some, you have to know your stocks as well that you're playing, whether it's Zillow or if it just runs up and down and has tremendous volatility. 
or if you just have a um, a stock that is very staid and stoic, such as maybe level three LLL. I seem to have lost my charting function here. If I can get back to this. In any event, we need to start asking ourselves questions about the market. Go through a list of questions to make sure your eyes on the ball. What are the indices and the stocks telling you? Is there anything? Are there any leading stocks to the upside or downside? Are they breaking support? Are they bouncing off support? Are they forming patterns or are they breaking down patterns? Focus on the leaders and look for other stocks and other sectors that look as if they're starting to take that same path that other leaders took. We're talking about bottoming and Google and Trip. Other stocks right now are doing the same thing. They're finding, they're turning up. Even as people are saying the market's topped out and volatility is so low that certainly the top is in. There's problems out there. Don't get me wrong. The bullishness is very high. We've seen corrections at the level of bullishness we have now. And VIX is very low, but it can stay low a long time, as I said earlier. Focus on those that are coming. Are there any more patterns? Are there any new patterns or new types of patterns? What's your support and resistance areas coming into play? What's your Fibonacci's? If you come into an area, as we saw with Google, that time and time again holds, well, that's one place you want to know. That's where the buyers and sellers are fighting it out. Are you coming up to those levels? Is the market coming? Are the indices trading at those levels? You put all of this together. That forces you to look at what the market is doing and not what everyone else is telling you. And that's got to be your key. If you're going to be successful, you have to rely on your plan, and your plan has to be based on the market. Now, maybe you have to adapt or remove some of your preconceived views of what has to work, but you don't throw away your plan. Maybe you reduce the amount of gain you're looking for on this run because the market is extra volatile right now. Or maybe breakouts are failing. So do you want to play a breakout or do you want to wait for it to break out and then test? And then continue to move to the upside. Maybe you can play it off of that first test. That's uh, many people today have said that's one of their favorite phrases, ours too. We get a test off of a good run and then we can come back and play that and, and play that move. Let me show you what I'm talking about just intraday today. Let me drop in an e-signal chart. We're looking at HC, AC8C. We've got a test ongoing right today. This is an intraday chart. We've had a great move to the upside. We had an excellent test. We can even draw a Fibonacci retracement here and see where it came back to. All right, came right back to the 50% level. And it's bouncing up. So we're anticipating a run up to the initial high there. Now, that would be the play we would look at. That makes it the play you, as what you would play off a 50% bounce like this. That's a logical play. We adjust our parameters according to what's happening during the day. One of the things that really will help you is starting to take partial profits, at least on part of the position. If you make the move that you want, you take some partial profits. And I'll go into that in a minute, but here's an idea that we kind of described. I talked about the seasons changing earlier. I like to put things in some kind of analogy. It was kind of an alien approach. You fall on another planet somewhere, and you're asked to trade their markets. And they have the same thing. We're, we're emotion. They have people, but not Vulcans. They have emotions. They don't control them. They let them run like we do. Well, Use that as your criteria. If you didn't know anything else about what was going on, if you didn't know there was problems in Iraq, if you didn't know that Russia and Ukraine were having problems, if you didn't know China and Vietnam were having issues, it didn't matter. If you didn't know that and just looked at the market, what is it telling you? And apply your plan accordingly. Would you buy it? Would you sell it? Would you do anything? Is it, say, is it anything that you understand? If it's something you don't understand, the last thing you want to do is buy it or sell it. You just want to stay away from it. It takes some patience to understand. 
Patience is good. Let a play come to you. Buying or selling things, if you're selling a house or selling property, let the bids come to you, we always say. But you need to act open. Maybe you don't do anything right now, but if you see it, if there's sound reasons for acting, do so. When the setups are there, you need to take them. But if you're listening to other people, if you have the anxiety, anxiety generated by the volatility because you aren't looking at what's happening, you're listening to what other people are saying, we end up not taking advantage when the setups show up. And that was my point about Mr. Tepper in that May 15th comment. The setups were there, but a lot of people were afraid to act. And what happened was we moved in, and now we're watching everyone else come in and push our positions to the upside. It's not a bad place to be. We kind of enjoyed that. Now, we had um, several similar plays along the way, not just in Google and Trip. There were many others that came along at, uh, at the same time. Let's see if I can get a charting thing going. Here we go. We had several plays come up at that same point, even some before that we were watching. Even during all of the turmoil, all of the back and forth and frustration about the market selling and people convinced that this could have been the sell-off, we saw stocks such as Zillow. It had a little triangle that it broke out of, it tested, and it put in a little double bottom right at the 78% Fibonacci retracement. And we played it earlier, and we played it off of this. We got up to our peak, uh, up at the prior peak, and we took our gain. And then we, but it still kept trending higher, so we picked it up yet again on 512 and wrote it to the upside. We did the same thing with STX. It's been doing very well. It's been a market leader. It's been, <clears throat> it broke higher. We bought, we put in our buy on 513 right here as it came off the bottom of the triangle. Remember, 515 is when Mr. Tepper made a statement. This was two days before that. We saw it put in its bottom. You see, this is an important level. You can't, this is the 200-day moving average, of course. We saw that. We also saw the bottom of the trend line, and we saw this reversal bar where the buyers came back in. So when it bounced, we bought into it, and it's been rising nicely ever since. There's many of these I could go through, and I will go through some more, just to give you a good idea of how you have to look and what you need to look for in volatile times. We also had, let's, let's go into Trulia here. Trulia just got a downgrade today. But it's doing fine. And on Trulia, we got in on 515, the very day. Right. There we go. This was the move. It had come off, and we saw it bouncing higher in this range. And sure enough, it went ahead to break out, and it's had a great performer for us. Cavium, it's been in semiconductors, electronics. It's been doing well. The entire sector's been doing well. We got in on that one on 516, the day after the comment. There it broke higher. It was in a downward pointing channel. We recognized the pattern. We saw a little double bottom action. And as it broke out of the channel, we moved in. And it's been a good performer as well. ILMN is another one. We got in this one. Four days after the comments from Mr. Tepper, right here on this move, but it had set up a nice pullback, a test of a double bottom test of the nice rally, and it moved up and it formed an empty little cup with handle and moved higher. We got in here, we got in again on the breakout from the cup with handle, and it's testing again right now, and it wants to try and take on this prior high. So we'll see if it can do that, but we're letting a position run. And the same thing with Priceline. We got in <clears throat> on it on 519 again, although it's, you know, we're pretty lucky we have some positions way back at $188 that we just kind of hung on forever, but sometimes you get lucky that way. The Priceline, 519, right here, when it made the, whoop, that's a little too far. Right there, when it made the break to the upside, it came in 
sold off and formed its own little inverted head and shoulders. Now, you see, we pick these up off of the apex of the shoulder, this one, the low point of the shoulder, since it's inverted. We don't wait until it gets back up to the neckline. We like to route, catch the, as much of the route as we can because we believe in our positions. And we'll move into those positions when we see them. We saw everything working here. McD was rising. You had the inverted head and shoulders. It was holding where it should near the 200 day and its prior low. And now it's trying to put in something of a handle. So we're struggling a bit now, but we had a great, strong move that banked us some very nice gain. So you can see, if you tune out the noise and look at what the market's telling you, you can make some money. Maybe we didn't get huge moves on all of them. STX was a good start. Zillow got us the first turn. It made us some good money. It didn't have you know, one of its famous moves, but we're in one of those right now that's continuing to run. But you've got to take what the market gives. That's our motto. And if you're looking at what it's giving you, you can take it. If there's a $100 bill on the ground out in the road, and there's no trucks bearing down about to splat you, but everyone's yelling, don't go out on the highway. Don't pick up that dog. Maybe you get hit. Well, of course you get hit. But you're smart. You look at both ways. You don't see anything. You walk out there, you pick it up, you turn around, you put it in your pocket, and you got it. Maybe not a whole run, but you're 100 bucks ahead just for using your head. That's a kind of a hat neat example, but you understand what I'm saying. You've got to set reasonable goals on a trade if it's volatile. You don't try to hit the wrong run. You home run, you take it if it comes. But there's a way that we can take a single and turn it into a home run and stretch it. Talk about that. We want to play the logical resistance. As I said, Fibonacci is consolidation, prior price highs, lows. We love those plays that don't have to break to a new high in order to make our money. Remember, we were talking about the um, Zillow trade. It didn't have to get to a new high for us to make money on that play. All it had to do was get back up. Let's see if I can get my chart to work. Here we go. All we had to do was ride Zillow. Let's get it. Here we go. All we had to do on Zillow was to get it to move back up to the prior high off of this 78% retracement of this move. And it made the move plus some. And we got our move. We didn't have to break to a new high in order to make our gain. And it tanked after that. It continued the uptrend, but it's just very volatile. And you have to know what you're getting into with that one. That's what we adjust your parameters, make plays in volatility that maybe you wouldn't consider before, but work because you're just trying to hit singles. Now, some very important money management aspects to be successful in volatile markets. Don't let yourself get pushed into trades that have much less than a 3 to 1 risk reward, particularly on options. You hear this a lot, but it just is so important. Too many people ignore this. Figure it out. Do your math. Does the trade give you the return you want? I'll take a 3 to 1 any day. Any day. And that stacks the deck in my favor. Not always going to work out, but puts the probabilities of helping you. Now, don't get confused. 3 to 1 means how much money you're willing to risk. You're willing to risk a dollar for every three dollars potential profit. So it's based on your stop, where you stop, not how much money you put in play. Otherwise, you would only be able to make a few plays in a smaller portfolio. But that means you have to have important risk-reward. You have to follow your risk-reward and your plan in order to be able to do this. You can't hang on to losers no follow your stop points. Have solid, real support levels for your stops. I've said it before, I'll just keep saying it. Moving averages, trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, gap points, ex Fibonacci extensions. When you sacrifice your rules, you're going to sacrifice your money, your brokerage account, to someone else. Now here's the deal. Here's another point. Give your right risk reward. Three to one is really the best. It's what you want to shoot for. Then you don't take partial profits. Don't. Let's say you got a gain going, but you're worried it's a volatile market and you're going to get it thrown back at you. You say, I just know it's going to come back on me. Well, it could. But if it hits your target and it does it well, it's not struggling, 
Take your parcel problem. Play your plan. That's your target. Play your plan. But only take a third or a half. Maybe a half if it's really volatile because you don't want to have most of it come back on you if it does turn. But that relieves the pressure to take profits as far as your hole in the pocket. It allows you to let a winning position run. You can incorporate partial profit taking and selling of gains in your rules. You need to do that at all times because then you can turn like a price line where we took partials and then we just twice we took partial gains on price line from way back at around two hundred dollars and we let it run ever since. We're just going to let the market take us out on the rest. Well the market's never taken us out on the rest of that. Doesn't happen all the time but with your options, you can turn a nice 70% gain into a 170% gain. And here's Zillow, as I was talking about earlier, the triangle breakout where it surged out of the triangle and tested and formed a double bottom 78% and then rallied higher. We took our profit here, but we got back in on this move right here, and it's still running higher for us. We took some partial profits already. <clears throat> Here's a better point. We entered at 416 on the bounce from this double bottom at the 78% Fibonacci retracement. We took a partial gain on 422 as it hit that prior level and it showed this reversal bar. It did come back, but it continued the trend. And we bought again after it got through this little choppy area. Put in a higher low. It held at the 38, the old 38% retracement level. And often what will happen is you know, 100, you go down, you come back up, and then rally to the 127. It's exactly what happened. And we took some gain at the 127% extension. But this part, we're still letting part of the play run to the upside, implementing partial profits. And thus, we're turning a, a good solid play and gain here that we were just seeing what the market was doing. By being smart, we're letting it run <coughs> and turning the gain. I don't even know what it is today. But it's, it's, it's substantial. Now, I guess the conclusion is that, and I go into you don't have to be super smart or a machine to do that, but you have to recognize what the market's doing, what the indices and the stocks are telling you at times when most people don't even want to look at it. I know you get that way. You get beat up, you don't want to look at it. But, as we've seen, you can make tremendous profits when the others are indecisive. On 519, the market was ready to move. Lots of stocks were ready to move on 519. But a lot of people missed this move. And quite frankly, a lot of these this move right here was what we made our money on with other people pushing our positions higher that we saw when no one else was really watching the market, at least watching it for buys. That pretty much concludes it. Uh, it's a sub-topic that's relatively simple, but it's one that needs reiterating, and we just saw a reason why I do it in just the past couple, three months. And if you were there, you were making money. If you applied your rules and looked through the volatility, you have been making great money. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. I don't know if anyone's got any questions or not. I don't know if we have time for any questions or not, but I'd be more than happy to take some. Great. Uh, John, I know we just hit the uh, 4 p.m. mark, so we got to get uh, the next speaker on, but is there any contact information you'd like to throw up so we can share that with everybody real quick? Yeah, let's see. Uh, you can reach us at customer service at investmenthouse.com. I had that here somewhere. Um, I don't see my slide here I had, but um, customer service at investmentdowhouse.com. You can also call us at the 800 number, which is 866-756-2656, and they can put you in touch with me if you want to talk with me some more, or if you want to change, exchange some email correspondence. I love doing that. I love hearing what people are up to and what they're trying, and we can, uh, I'm, I'm always learning, and um, I'm here to help anyone who wants to learn as well. Great. Well, we uh, I sent that that email out to everybody, and we really appreciate uh, appreciate you having you in today. And everyone that was master trainer John Johnson.